beautiful. beautiful. Thing of beauty. The American bald eagle, a native of North America, has been a symbol for our national emblem since 1782. Their distinctive white head and tail, brown feathers, and large wingspan make them iconic. With an average lifespan of 20 years, bald eagles can reach speeds up to 99 miles per hour. But why do eagles like the urban environment of Philadelphia? I traveled to the John Hines National Wildlife Refuge near the Philadelphia International Airport. That's where Garrett White, a biological science technician and expert on bald eagles, provided his insight on these amazing creatures and why two of them have been calling the refuge home for more than a decade. They can see uh, four times farther than people can. And it's been presumed that they could see a hare moving in the grass a mile away. This pair of eagles has been nesting here for about a decade and they return to this same area. Some years they're successful, some years they're not, but they always come back to this nest here. The nest itself is actually really large. You can kind of see that opening where there's like a little dark dot right against the trunk. How's that for a shot? They first started coming here in 2010. Eagles are looking for enough area territory that has enough food to raise their young. Generally corresponds to about 1,500 acres or so, and John Hines is about 1,000 acres. So there's, there's ample space here for uh, an eagle to be able to raise a successful nest. Um, with the Darby Creek here, Delaware River, not far away, and this impoundment behind me, there's plenty of opportunities for them to catch fish and, and plenty of territory without a lot of competition. These raptors, which soared high in the sky in our region in the early 1900s, were nearly wiped out, landing them on the endangered species list in 1978, mostly due to something called bioaccumulation of DDT. Bioaccumulation is when uh, pesticides or chemicals work their way up the food cycle, uh, so they get absorbed by the insects and then the fish eat the insects, and then the bigger fish eat the smaller fish, and then the birds eat the fish. And every single time, all those toxins are passed on, and eventually it figured, the scientists were able to figure out that uh, DDT weakens the eggshells so that when an eagle would sit on it, it would crush it. DDT was banned by the EPA in 1972, but the damage had already been done. In fact, in 1983, there were only three nests documented in the entire state of Pennsylvania. One looks like it's about to take off. Thanks to conservationists and the federal government, the bald eagle has been making a comeback. They were taken off the endangered species list in 2007 and can now be seen in a host of other places in the Delaware Valley. One of those places is a section of Pennypack Park near Kern Fromholz Correctional Facility where the creek meets the Delaware River. This is where Patty and Pete which they have been named by locals, have also made a nest. Eagles are very adaptable. As long as there's a waterway where they can get fish, which is pr the primary source of their, their diet, then they can make the nest and, and be safe. They're just looking for high areas without a lot of predators to uh, attack their eaglets. Now that you know that bald eagles can be found in the Philadelphia region, there are a few things you want to take note of, especially if you come bird watching to a place like John Hines Refuge. You want to pack your patience, and a pair of binoculars. I have a scope set up over here, but in general, a small pair of binoculars is gonna work great. It's just so peaceful, so beautiful. How could it be any better? This is one of my happy places. It's a sight to see. Come, come down and see it. Barb Kearney and Ed Reardon have been coming to the John Hines Refuge for years. And Ed even saw one of the eagles pluck a fish right from the water. I always say it's timing. You can walk these trails you might see something today, you might not see it tomorrow, but you come through, you might see something good. When you are out and about, there are a few things to look out for because they are not the easiest birds of prey to spot. For the adults, you're looking for that white head and white tail. They're really large birds. Uh, their wingspan is, I'm about six feet tall, I'm 5'10", and so their wingspan is also about six feet. Um, they were, and then they're about three feet long. Common birds that they might be misidentified would be ospreys, which tend to have uh, whiter bellies um, or like a blotched black and white head. Or another bird might be vultures, tend to be looked at, but they're all black or, or black and gray, so they won't have any white on them. In general, if you're just looking up and you're looking for any sort of soaring birds, 
those are the ones you want to just put a pair of binoculars on um, and see if you can spot it. When it comes to wildlife, it never ceases to amaze me how adaptive they can be. Yeah, I see them. It's just a quiet, beautiful place. It's just great to see them back again. I mean, they're really making a big comeback.